For thousands of years, man has been enjoying the delights of wine, the tasty alcoholic fluid which is the byproduct of fermented sugar and forms a key component on menus during festive periods. Whether it's dry, sweet, or the sparkling variety, you can learn to make your own as an amateur fermenting for home use or a professional running a lucrative business. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA is fueling local interest by providing training in basic wine making for persons in farming communities where there's an abundance of suitable raw materials. Today we're in class, learning the rudiments for the amateur winemaker. This is one way we can utilize our fruits and our vegetables. You can use that breadfruit too. But the thing is, it's nice to use a breadfruit when it's lush and ripe. You know, when, the man, when you're ready to throw it, you say plaka plaka. That is when you use it because you get a real nice flavor from it. You use the sour sap, you use everything that is there and get value from it. You, you talk, we talk about adding value and, and making the country go in terms of economics. That's the means. We have a lot of herbs like our guinea hen or aloe vera and so forth. So the, the home using, doing winemaking is one means of utilizing all of those. And now that it's Christmas, if you had set your wine, say from June, July, you wouldn't have to buy some gifts because you could prepare your gifts. Wine is basically a juice that you're allowed to ferment. And how you work the juice is what gives you a good wine or gives you vinegar. No, there are two main, three types of wine, three types of wine. This is yeast, and it is one of the main, it is the main source of your wine making. The sugar is what feeds the yeast, producing the alcohol and the CO2. When you're ready to do your thing, what you can do is um, put a little water in a container, dissolve, and then you can put this in it. And if it stays there and bubbles and starts like it's spreading, the yeast is good and well. If it, draw, if it falls to the bottom and not now go on, your yeast dead. So therefore you can't use it to make a wine. If you have a wine making kit available, this is, would be the ideal thing to make your wine in. Because you have an airlock here that can tell you when fermentation is happening and when it stops. This is filled with water. And when the wine is being made and the CO2 is being given off, the water in here bubbles. So automatically when no bubbles is coming up in here, you know that fermentation done. So you can pour off your thing. If you're just going the real homemade style, when you don't have the facility, all you have is a keg. So you are going to work from the books. The book says three weeks. Say you're making um, pineapple wine nice to use. The best sugar to use in that case would be the granulated sugar. Remember the granulated sugar is clear so you would see the yellow it would show up. If you're doing a batch of roots you're going to be sweetening with molasses and the dark sugar because when you drink your roots you want that earthy taste. The fact of the matter is when you break it up you expose more surface area so therefore, you're going to get more flavor being, being extracted. So that is why you pulverize it. After you finish everything, because the heat is a factor, you store your wine in a dark area. Dark, cool area. Today, we'll be doing a sorrel wine. It's Christmas time, so we have to nice up the place. The hot water is on the soil already and we draw it, we start the sweetening process so we can speed up things. No, this bag here. It's a nice little drawstring bag. It's like a strainer. I throw the soil here and I lower it. No, I leave the trash or in the bag and keep it in there so fermentation happens with it in the bag. The reason simple for that is the flavor at the end of the day is going to be stronger. When you use this and you have it in here, you don't go to 21 days. You go like day 19, you take out this and you get rid of it and then you close it back and on the 21 day, you get ready to throw. After it has fermented and you throw it off, you can, you, you can add some, some reagents to it so that it clears up easily. 
The recipe calls for four pounds of sugar. I've already added two, so I'm going to add the other two. So we're going to stir consistently to ensure that the sugar dissolves. Now, it is important to remember that the sugar content affects the alcohol content of the wine. You may add too much and you'll get a very sickeningly sweet wine because fermentation isn't complete. Now we are going to measure our yeast to add. You need one tablespoon of yeast. This mixture is sorrel, ginger. So all of those little things you see there, that's ginger. And of course, a little, a little cinnamon and the sugar. It's important to remember, you see here, when you add your liquid, at no point it should be up here. You should leave space to facilitate circulation of the carbon dioxide. When you are setting your wine, label your things properly. Label the date that it was set, and you count off your three weeks, and label the day you're going to throw off. Then now, you are going to close off your container. Put a little tape around here, and you do your thing, and three weeks later you throw off your wine. So we are going to decant, and please re realize I'm not saying strain, I'm saying decanting, because strain you would get the impression that you're going to throw it to a sieve, we're not doing that, and you do it slowly. Now you see we're coming towards the end where you see the residue coming out, the yeast there. So you don't want that to get out, so you're going to put that down. And this, you're going to throw this away. And then now you cover this and you put it down and you can, I usually tell my ladies, um, you can throw off every week. When it's nice and clear, then you can bottle.